What's up Ozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome finally to a theory video concerning Stitch Line Games, the theory that the story of the Stitch Wraith actually slots into the game timeline with supporting stories filling in some gaps from the past, just as Scott told us about way back when the Fazbear Frights books were being first announced. This is a theory that personally I have believed for a very long time, while many others frown at. Today I want to talk a little bit about a problem I've had with this theory and how it could potentially be solved. This video is actually going to be split up into two parts. The first part only requires you to have read the Fazbear Frights, but the second part actually contains information regarding the first epilogue of the Tales from the Pizzaplex series. You can watch the first part of the video and then come back once you have read the epilogue. The story of the man in room 1280 is, as you probably already picked up on, the story of William Afton during his torment in Ultimate Custom Night. The story told us that the souls responsible were keeping him alive in an induced nightmare for years after the events of Pizzeria Simulator in 2023. The events of this story make complete sense to be part of the main game timeline. Afton's body was found in the fire, only to be brought to Heracles Hospital and found to be alive. And we know that Afton's body was found by someone because he eventually makes his way into the VR game as Glitch Trap. That brings us nicely to the final part of the Man in Room 1280, where we see Afton at the Fazbear Distribution Center, who baths up a liquid and collapses to the floor. At that point, Afton's, Cassidy's and Andrew's agony and souls are put into the VR game, the AR animatronics and various threats that we see in the Fazbear Fright series. This leads to FNAF VR with Princess Quest and the Stitch line with the agony. All of that would have been completely fine if it wasn't for the release of Security Breach. In Security Breach, we find out that Afton still holds a physical form by the name of Burn Trap and that coincidentally, he resides in the pizza place, which is the exact same place we saw him in Pizzeria Simulator. So who's to say he ever even went to Heracles Hospital? Why can't he have just been laying there for years until Vanny came and rebuilt him? So here I see two main problems. Number one, Afton in Security Breach is extremely different to how Afton looks in Pizzeria Simulator and how he is described to look in The Man in Room 1280. Here, he appears to literally be a full-on robot entangled in human flesh and organic material. And number two, the last time we see Afton in the Stitch line, he is drowning in a lake as the agony with the puppet. So how does he get from that lake to under the pizza plex, and who's to say he even left the pizza place after all this time? Now, in my eyes, there are answers to these questions, and if anything, the two problems we have somewhat contradict each other. Let me show you why. If Stitchline Games wasn't true, and Afton was just chilling in the pizza place the entire time, then how does he become a more robotic life form? And if we're saying that he does transfer into a new robotic body, then how come there is still organic human material scattered across his body? Additionally, if this were to be a new body, why would he even be called Burn Trap? Here's what I think. I believe Afton's body was in fact taken out to Heracles Hospital. Whether you believe Stitchline Games or not, I don't think that you can deny that Afton was found and was transported out of the pizza place. I think that the ending of The Man in Room 1280 gives an incredibly strong explanation for Glitchtrap and Cassidy's digitalized form in Princess Quest. But I also believe that Afton's real body is now gone. Burntrap doesn't hold Afton's body like Springtrap and Scraptrap did. Instead, Burntrap holds Afton's consciousness through his connections with Glitchtrap. His robotic form was potentially built by Vanny with the use of Glamrock Bonnie's parts and his power comes from draining the energy of the Mega Pizzaplex. For the people who haven't read the Lally's Game epilogue yet, I have two more questions for you to think about. Clearly there's something bigger going on here, seeing as a question that isn't answered from all of this is what about all the flesh surrounding the Burn Trap animatronic? And on top of that, we should probably address what on earth is going on with the blob. And these are actually things I actually want you to think hard about before reading Lally's Game. But for those of you who haven't read the epilogue, this is the end of the video for you. Make sure you come back later once you have read it. Thank you so much for watching, and for anyone who knows what happened in the first epilogue, let's get into some juicy lore. 
Now the first thing I want to talk about is the nature of the Pizzaplex. We all thought that they built the Pizzaplex on top of the Pizzeria Simulator location to quite literally cover up the past. However, this epilogue sheds light on the fact that they were genuinely going to make the place a real tourist attraction. They decide to clean the place, get rid of all of the endos inside, and build the Mega Pizzaplex right on top of it. This sort of thing has me thinking if they even went as far as conserving the real living room that we see in sister location just so that they can make it a tourist attraction. And before we go on to Burn Trap, I have a feeling that all of these endos that are being thrown out into a massive pile of garbage are going to eventually become the blob, especially knowing what happens later. So in this epilogue we are introduced to a bunch of shiny endoskeletons except one which looks like it has previously been caught in a fire except the skull. It seems to be a rabbit animatronic and it sounds as though it was intended to be a guitarist but apparently the endoskeleton looks a lot more complex than the others which look like human figures. Now, a lot of people are claiming that this is Burn Trap. I think there's a possibility we could be mistaken, just like how in Fazbear Frights we thought that the Stitch Wraith was Ennard. However, for the sake of this video, let's assume that this is an endoskeleton who ends up becoming Burn Trap. The first thing to note is that this was actually a delivery to the pizza place, meaning Afton definitely didn't just stay here the whole time. The endoskeleton is said to look more complex, probably because the contraptions may actually be the contraptions of a springlock suit, which we know firstly there was a rabbit version that got burned and secondly appears very differently to the regular and glamrock endoskeletons. The main event of this epilogue is that this endoskeleton actually goes out and slaughters numerous people. Maybe these people will go on to possess the blob, knowing their parts are also being thrown into the scrap heap. But also, what if the flesh on Burn Trap isn't actually Afton's flesh? What if it is the flesh of his victims? In my personal opinion, this makes Burn Trap 10 times more scarier than he already is, and overall just better. I really hope they do explore the Burn Trap route because for sure, we need clarification on the events between the Stitch Line and Tails Line or whatever you want to call it. So for anyone who has made it this far, thank you for watching. The question we need to consider going forward is essentially just who is this endoskeleton? It's a partly burned rabbit guitarist with a more substantial endoskeleton. So what are its origins? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in another video. Goodbye.